Gillette is under fire from both critics and supporters of the Me Too movement for an ad seemingly aimed at promoting better behavior among men. Critics say the minute and a half film vilifies all men as chauvinists. Others argue that Gillette's parent company is trying to monetize the Me Too movement. They also point out that Procter & Gamble spends advertising dollars on Fox News, which has been the target of multiple sexual harassment lawsuits. Well, let's discuss the ad now with our guests in London now. James Miller is a political commentator and author of Dads Don't Babysit. And Michael Buchanan is the leader of the UK's anti-feminist political party, Justice for Men and Boys. Gentlemen, pleasure having you on the Newsmakers. Let me start with you, Michael Buchanan. Um, what's your problem with the Gillette ad? My problem is it's a very naked attack on men as a class. Uh, G uh, uh, Gillette, of course, also have the shaving brand Venus for women. Now, if, if Gillette produced an ad um, telling women um, t uh, um, um, telling women that they should uh, stop being stop their toxic femininity, they should stop violently attacking their partners, they should stop paternity fraud, and they should stop um, killing uh, their unborn children in their tens of millions. I think there'd be a bit of a storm, don't you? Well, I don't really because that's a hypothetical. Let's focus on the ad as it is right now. It's saying don't bully, don't sexually harass. What's the problem with that? It's not. Uh, what, what the problem is, is it's saying that men, that, that, that a very small proportion of, well, it's making out that, that far more men exhibit bad behavior than they do. Hmm. Uh, the, the, the same radical feminist uh, director who, uh, who, who made this has also made uh, pieces in which she uh, almost deifies women, you know, makes them into goddesses. But here we have men uh, just treated uh, appallingly. And it's also racist, might I say. How is uh, it almost racist? All the good men, uh, almost all the good men in the piece are black and almost all the bad men are white. And that, that, that again, is a, is a long-standing feminist narrative that not only are men evil, but white mm -hmm. men are particularly evil. Okay, James Miller, this type of disapproval has been rampant online and we saw a lot of men get really angry at the Gillette ad and they want to boycott Gillette and so on. Tell me why you were having a little chuckle to yourself when, when you heard Michael's misgivings. Well, I mean, I don't know where to begin, really. I mean, the director made a film, uh, an advert called This Girl Can, encouraging women to get into sport. Three million more women took up sport. I can't see how that is possibly a bad thing. Um, yeah, if, uh, if Gillette is, uh, is wrong, they're going to go bust, aren't they? I mean, that's the bottom line. We've had the, uh, the men's rights activists, and this is like a week on, and they're still been triggered by this. It's a razor advert, for goodness sake. And if it's so out of touch with men, then they're going to go bust, end off, because it's mainly men that use razors. I mean, admittedly, uh, neither of your guests obviously are customers of Gillette. But, um, you know, that's the bottom line. But <laughs> Gillette aren't going to go bust, are they? Because, in fact, they are uh, tapping into a um, much wider movement, a much wider feeling that men need to change what it means to be masculine. Right. Uh, they need to be better. And that's what the advert is about. And most men agree with that. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting. Good point that you made. The only person reaching out for a Mac 3 this morning was, in fact, the host of the program. Michael Buchanan, be better. Why not point out that there are some, there are certain terrible things happening out there in society, and this shines a little light on it. Even if Gillette's intentions are not altogether altruistic, they just want to make a buck, so what? It's advertising, and the message is something that you can't disagree with. The message is something I can disagree with, and I go back to the double standard. Nobody, nobody least of all Gillette, are saying to women, be better. No one, no one is saying stop committing paternity fraud. Stop, stop violently attacking your partners. Stop killing unborn children in their tens of millions. Right. Gillette are not saying that. This is uniquely okay. men and boys okay. who, who are regarded so, so as let evil. Me, let me then ask you, Michael, if you feel this is part of a broader conspiracy of sorts culturally against men, because that's what your, your movement stands for. Help me understand why you see this as something bigger. Oh, it's very much something bigger. I mean, it's, it's part of the radical feminist project to shame men um, in, order to, um, in order to pave the way for them to be ever more privileged. In our last election, uh, general election manifesto, we covered 20 areas where the human rights of men and boys are assaulted by the state's actions and inactions, 
almost always to privilege women and girls. There is not one area in Britain today where the state spe uh, specifically um, assaults the human rights of women and girls, not one. So, so, so feminists are not fighting for gender equality. That's the big lie. They're, 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 they're fighting for ever more privilege. Okay, so James, this is being pushed by radical feminists who want power, they don't want equality. That's the opinion on the other side. Tell me, tell me why you disagree with that. Uh, well, the radical feminists have been trying that for a long time and they're clearly completely rubbish because there is no metric by which you can suggest that women are on top. Whether you call that the number of MPs we have in Britain or in almost any parliament in the world, I think Rwanda is uh, particularly equal, but they really stand out. Everywhere else, we have more lawmakers than uh, female, more male lawmakers than female lawmakers, whether it's uh, company boards, whether it's pay, again, there's a gender pay gap. Um, on any metric, men are winning. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that is based on history, that's based on all sorts of things, and it's time for it to change. We've moved on. Surely we can change it. And that's where the Gillette ad comes in. Can I just come back to you? You said, you know, so what about the advert? It's actually really important that men see different role models, that they see that it's okay to be different. So it actually really matters. As you say, Gillette may be just about making money. But by putting this ad out there, they give men the opportunity to go, yeah, actually, it's okay to challenge sex with them. It's normal. That's all right, for example. Um, and that's really important. Um, because uh, it's up to men to change it. You know, as I say, men have the power, but that also gives us the power to change things. Right. Uh, and that's where this advert so, is really important. So, James, just, you know, for the record, do you consider yourself oppressed in any way as a man, or do you consider yourself privileged, James? Uh, I'm certainly privileged. I'm certainly not oppressed. I am. There are um, constrictions on who I am and what I can be. Society says men should be a certain way, mm. and we absolutely need to challenge that. And that is where the ad comes in. Um, and there's certainly um, gender stereotypes are bad for women and they're bad for men. It's not a, it's not a competition. It's not like if one is up or the other right. is down. That's the trouble with men's rights activists. They think that if women have more rights, somehow men have to have fewer rights. It's not a zero-sum game. We all gain. Oh. Okay. So, Mike, Michael, I, as well, do not consider myself oppressed in any way, shape or form. I consider myself very privileged. Do you consider yourself oppressed as a man, Michael? Uh, this isn't about me, this is not about you, and this is not about James. This is about um, a, a, a movement, an ideology, feminism, which is all about privileging women evermore. Has it taken anything point, away from James... you, is my question. Has it taken anything away from you? This is, this is not about me. And it, uh, again, Who's it about? You know, I, I make the point. Uh, it's about men as a class and about women as a class. And I go back to the point that there are 20 areas in Britain today where the human rights of men and boys are assaulted by the state and not one where the human rights of women and girls are, affected, are, are assaulted by the state. Not one. So, 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 so men, men are very clearly disadvantaged by the state, although men pay three quarters of the income tax which fund the state. Men, men, are, right. men are financing okay. their, their own muggers. I, I want to tell you something interesting, Michael, because clearly when, when these guys look at the zeitgeist, right, they try and tap into when the advertising agency and all the marketing heads within a, a major company like Gillette or, or Nike with Kaepernick and so on, they try and tap into the zeitgeist. They try and tap into what's very mainstream, if you like. And so when Pankaj Bala, who is the Gillette brand director, said... We weren't trying to court controversy. We were just trying to upgrade the selling line that we've held for 30 years. The best a man can get and make it relevant. I don't think our intention was to have controversy just for the sake of controversy. What's interesting, it's going to annoy the radical feminist when he says that, Michael, because he's saying we're not even trying to change anything. We're just reflecting what's out there in society. So isn't the truth, Michael, that society has moved on and you're stuck in the dark ages? On the contrary, we're, we're, we're the people who are telling the truth. I mean, the, the, this, this nonsense about toxic masculinity, I mean, uh, you know, traditional masculinity is a very fine thing, and we need more of it, not less. Such as um, how? OK. Oh, just before you come in, James, what type of sure. traditional masculinity do we need more of? I think, I think uh, you, know, uh, you know, qualities like stoicism, um, you know, protecting the vulnerable, and that, 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 that's a very big difference between men's rights activists like me and feminists. We, we, we want to protect the weak and vulnerable, 
whereas feminists glory in the slaughter of unborn children. Okay, you brought up abortion a lot here, and that's almost a separate mm. debate here, right? So you brought it up three times. I just want to note that, you know, it's an issue for you. And perhaps when we have an abortion debate, we'll bring you on next time. But James Miller, round us off here as we finish up the discussion. I, I just have to, you know, the idea of, of uh, traditional masculinity, in the, the last couple of weeks, we've had a report from the American uh, Psychological Association, which says traditional masculinity is bad for men, that it causes, uh, it increases uh, poor mental health amongst men. It's a, it can lead to suicide, mm -hmm. uh, lead to dangerous risk-taking, uh, and that is to do with a lack of uh, um, willing to sort of show emotion and show weakness and all that bit. I just don't understand why these men's rights activists think they know better than the American Psychological Association. These are, you know, serious scientists. I'd be, and they I'd, say I'd be very happy to tell you. Bad. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Well. Okay. I'd be, I'd be, okay, Michael. I'd, I'm, I'm going to ask for an extra to that. extra minute. Okay. Go ahead. So, Michael, okay. have have a little okay. bite, and then James uh, will respond at the end. Michael. We we we, we did a piece on the absurd. Um, report from the American um, Psychology, Psychological Association recently. The 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 this is the uh, organization, a bit like James's um, uh, James's magazine, The New Statesman, um, has been absolutely taken over by radical feminists. So so the only narratives that will come out of the APA will be narrative will be feminist a, narratives. So there's a scientific report. And your response is, you wrote a report and it's been taken over by feminists. That's clearly not, you're not, you've got equal arguments, have you there? You've got a massive scientific, a serious report, and you saying, oh, they've been taken it's, over it's by feminists. It's not a serious, that's, that's it's not a, response, it's not a it? serious Come report, on. it is, okay, fair enough. it is not a serious report, it is feminist propaganda, okay, nothing less. so one of you believes it's feminist propaganda, the other believes this is, you know, proper science um, that's been conducted by verified scientists. Gentlemen, I have to move on, and I just want to uh, put this out there for the sake of clarity. We reached out to Gillette. We would have loved to have had them on the program to discuss their thinking and why they did it. They declined to give us the interview, unfortunately. But James and Michael, I thank you both for joining us here on the Newsmakers.